Even if you're a fan of retro tactical RPGs like Ogre Battle and Shining Force, you may not realize that the subgenre has a far bigger library than most people think. Before games like Final Fantasy Tactics really popularized the subgenre in the West, Japanese developers cranked out tons of tactical RPGs on the 8 and 16 bit platforms. Titles like Tactics Ogre, Bahamut Lagoon, and the Fire Emblem games really stood out in their time and defined the grid oriented style many of us know and love today. Another example of a game that did this but goes far more overlooked is Dare Langrisser, a tactical RPG that came out on the Super Famicom in the summer of 1994. This was right when the system was in its prime, but it was never localized in North America on the SNES. Don't be distressed though, because you can easily play this one today via a fantastic English translation patch. I'll leave a link to the patch in the description below so you can try it for yourself. And there is one other way to play it today, but I'll get to that later. Dare Langrisser is actually a remake of Langrisser 2, which was released on the Sega Mega Drive in Japan, but given an interface and graphical overhaul for the Super Famicom version. This game was the sequel to the first Langrisser game, which was actually released in North America as War Song for the Sega Genesis. Langrisser 2 went unplayable in an official capacity until 2019, when it was released in the form of a Langrisser 1 and 2 remake package for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Steam. And I have to say, this is the best way to play the game today, but it's really a remaster more than it is a remake, and I say that as a compliment. It retains all the same game mechanics, visual style, interface, and even maps, but adds Japanese voice acting with English subtitles and other ease of life features. The sprites and battle animations look great, it's simply the best way to play it now. I would also say the audible dialogue and superior translation really make the story come to life. And speaking of story, Langrisser 2 centers upon three factions vying for power in a fantasy world. The main character Erwin, or Elwin as it's translated in the remake, is a wandering swordsman who begins the tale with an allegiance to the Descendants of Light. As Elwin sets out to track down his instructor's killer, General Leon of the Rhaegard Empire appears to kidnap Liana, the childhood companion of Elwin's friend Hein. Depending on the choices you make in the adventure though, Elwin can shift his loyalties to either the Rhaegard Empire or the Demon Tribe and this greatly affects how the story plays out. In fact, the narrative style in Langrisser 2 is one of its most redeemable qualities. It's completely tailored to your choices in a way few other RPGs are, and there are so many possible outcomes. And I don't just mean minor variations either. There are 13 total endings available in Langrisser 2, and I can't think of a better way of putting replay value into a game like this. I also have to commend the story for its references and linkages to the events in the first Langrisser game. These were creatively done to expand the lore of the series and satisfy the fans, and it's definitely not lost on me. There's also another major customization mechanic in Langrisser 2, but I want to get into the gameplay first, because you'll be spending the majority of the game on the battlefields. These locations have preset win and loss conditions, much like in other tactical RPGs but there's also bonus objectives for each battle. This includes things like killing particular units or making your way to particular areas of the map with the right characters. At the beginning of battles, you have options regarding placement of your commanders as well. Mercenary units can also be hired to supplement the power of your army in battles, and more become available as unit commanders level up, but they do have a cost. And yes, for all you reptile fans out there, Lizardmen are in fact available. Movements and actions play out exactly like in other tactical RPGs, where each unit can move one time and perform one action per turn. This one uses an overhead view rather than an isometric grid view. Unlike in many tactical RPGs though, combat between clashing units in Langrisser 2 plays out on a separate screen, where you see many sprites engaged in combat with lots of attack animations. And I have to say, this visual choice is pretty sweet. I think it's kind of comparable to some of the army battles in the Suikoden games, and serves as a unique way to take the monotony out of a grid-only approach. Victory in these clashes depends on several factors, like terrain advantages and unit statistics, but the most important factor of all is unit type. Each type of unit, whether it be soldiers, spearmen, 
horsemen, and others have different strengths and weaknesses. Each are stronger relative to some of the units, but also weaker relative to others. This means that you have to make careful decisions as to when it's best to attack and defend, and there really isn't a good way to know which unit type trumps which outside of experimentation. The title can actually be pretty challenging if you make the wrong choices, and I had to rethink my strategy several times. I suffered some losses. Victory in the battles means progressing in the story, and the narrative is arranged into chapters. You can go back and replay past chapters if you wish also. In between battles you can shop for weapons and armor, organize your units, get more information on the story and lore, and even view the layout of the next battle's map. You can't freely roam from place to place in open-ended fashion, but that's not really the norm in a tactical RPG like this anyway. Remember that other customization mechanic I spoke of earlier? Well, just like in Ogre Battle, you begin Langrisser 2 with a priestess asking you a series of questions. For players that manage to unglue their eyes from the distraction at the center of the screen, the questions deal with strategic impulses, leadership qualities, and other things that alter Elwyn's starting stats. And hey, you can even redo the questionnaire again if you don't like the results. It's just a fun way to give you a personally tailored protagonist and make the experience a bit more unique. As far as I see it, Langrisser 2 is a great game filled with a creative story, fun lore, and solid gameplay. And this is true whether you play the translated Daryl Langrisser or the remake. To me, the greatly improved soundtrack and ease of life features in the remake makes it the better option to play. It's just a great throwback experience in general, and totally reminds me of the RPG glory days. In my mind, it's one of the most overlooked hidden gem RPGs on Steam, and it's packed full of fun. If you enjoy the Shining Force or Fire Emblem games, this one is perfectly suited to you but it also offers a little bit of variance in the form of its unique combat battles. If you don't like tactical RPGs at all, you may want to give it a pass, but I think there's enough here for most traditional RPG fans to enjoy also. So what do you think? Is Langrisser 2 as good as other tactical RPGs like Tactics Ogre, Bahamut Lagoon, or the Fire Emblem games? Let me know in a comment below. If you haven't played it yet, does it look like a game you would try? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell for more retro content, and please join my Discord community linked in the description. If you like my content, please consider supporting me via YouTube's join feature or as a Patreon patron to get access to advanced videos and other bonuses.